Hello everyone and welcome to our brand new Vicious Computers review. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Flerk. So sit tight and get ready for the full detailed review. I'm going to tell you all about it, what it is, what it does, why you want it, and why you might not. So as of late, the Flerk and a few other devices similar to it have really taken off in popularity, mostly due to XBMC, now known as Kodi, and a few other programs making home theater PCs a lot more predominant because they're great sources of entertainment in your home. However, it's not very convenient to have to have a wireless keyboard and mouse floating around in your house, or worse yet, a wired keyboard and mouse in your house, so that you can control your computer to use those programs on your PC. So that's where the invention of the Flerk and other devices have come in to help integrate those home theater PC setups and make them more user-friendly and feel like a more traditional remote-controlled interface. So if you're sitting here now and you're watching this review, you probably fall into one of two categories. Either you already know what the Flerk is and you're looking for a review of it, so you want to know if it's worth buying or not, and we'll get into that. But if you fall into group two, you don't know what the Flerk is and you want to know what it is. So let's go ahead and start there and quickly and easily explain exactly what this device does. So here we go, bam, what are we looking at right now? This is a wireless keyboard and a USB receiver. This is something we're all familiar with. We plug the USB receiver into our computer and now we can move that keyboard anywhere around in our house within range and control the computer and type and do all those things. What the Flerk is, is pretty easy. We just take out that USB receiver and we replace it with the Flerk itself. So there we go, we got the Flerk in place and that's exactly what it is, it's just a wireless USB receiver. But what's special about it is we're not gonna be pairing it to any keyboards. You'll notice it comes in a package by itself. So what do you pair it with? Well, that's easy. Let's take that keyboard away. Ah, now there we go, that's better. And this is what your final setup would look like at home if you bought the Flerk. So the first point that we really have to make and what we're trying to drive home here is that when you plug the Flerk into your computer and you're holding your remote in your hand, what you really have is a wireless keyboard. Whatever device you plug the Flerk into sees a wireless keyboard. So whatever program you're using that normally uses the keyboard now can be worked with your remote. The way that it works is the Flerk is completely programmable. There's a piece of software, you open it up, you point your remote at it, and you say, I want to use the up arrow key on the keyboard. And then you press the up key on your remote. Left, right, down, the numbers, the A through Z, space, any key on your keyboard, you simply program it to your remote. Chances are your remote has a lot of buttons you don't use, or you might even have extra remotes you don't use. And now you can use those remotes to control your programs instead of using a keyboard and a mouse. So the Flerk, in a nutshell, is a wireless keyboard that's fully programmable to use your existing remotes. So I hope you understand it. Now let's move into actually getting into the details of how you program it, how it works, and if it's worth owning. All right, welcome back, everybody. And we're now into a live recording of my desktop screen so that I can show you how you program the Flerk. And once I show you how you program it, I think it's going to connect even more exactly how the device works and what's so cool about it. So I'm on the uh, flark.tv website, which is the home page for this device, and I went to their downloads section. And this is where you're going to download the software that you use to program it. And as you can see, it is cross-platform. We have Windows, we have Mac, and we have Linux. So download the one that's appropriate to the operating system that you're currently on with your computer, in my case, Windows. And we already downloaded it, installed it, and then I launched it. So this is what it looks like when you open it up. In addition to that, over here is an image of my remote that I'll be using for the demonstration. This is the Verizon TV remote that came with my DVR, and I'll point out the keys that I'm using on the remote to help make you understand exactly what's going on behind the camera. So first things first, you'll see that you have a little simple interface here and you can mouse over those buttons. When you click on one, that's when you're actually gonna program that key. This is a very, very, very basic interface, but there's actually more. So you need to know to go under controllers, and here you have all of your different templates. So we have like Amazon Fire TV, we have the general media keys like play, pause, next, Windows Media Player, XBMC, Boxy, and then we also have a full keyboard layout. The reason those templates are there is so that it can tell you exactly what keys you need for your device and help you program just the keys that you need rather than throwing just a full keyboard layout and every button in the world at you and you have to fish through. If you're using, say, XBMC, you might not know that R is this and T is that, so they just give you a template so you know this is the home button, this is the back button, this is the power on, this is your CPU information. So they give you the keys to help make it easier for you to program it. Now for the demonstration, since I'm doing it on my computer, I'll go ahead and use the full keyboard layout. And uh, on the remote, we'll look at the remote here. First thing I see is I have these arrow keys 
up, down, left, and right. That makes really good sense for me to make those the arrow keys on the keyboard for up, down, left, and right. So this is all you have to do to program it. Go ahead and plug it in. So it's already plugged in. That's why it says it's connected. And click on the key you want to program. So I'll press the up arrow key, and it will ask me to press the button to be paired with up. So I point my remote at the Flurk, plug it into the computer, and press up. And it's instantaneous. It tells me it recorded, and I'll go to the next key I want to program. So I'll press down, and press down, press left, and then left, and then press right and right. So I just paired up, down, left, and right. And now also I'm going to grab some number keys. So one, two, and three, I'll make that one, two, and three on the keyboard. So one, two, and three. Now to show you how that works, what we just accomplished, I'll bring over an Excel spreadsheet and I'm going to click into it. And now I'm totally hands off. I'm not touching my keyboard or my mouse. I'm holding my remote and I'm going to point the remote at my computer and I'm going to press right down, left, and up. You can see how I'm navigating with the remote. And then now I can type with those three number keys that we just had programmed. So I'll press one, two, three. So just like if I was using a wireless keyboard, except now I'm using my remote. And let me close that and explain what we just did. So basically, everything we just programmed, we saved to the Flurk. This is really important to understand. We didn't save it to my computer, even though I used the computer to program it. Think about if you have like an Amazon Fire TV, you're not going to program this on the Fire TV, you're going to program it for the Fire TV. So everything you do, it's automatically saved to the Flurk itself. So if I wanted to, I could program this here on my computer, but then take it to someone else's house. As long as I take the remote that I used and I take my Flurk, everything goes along with the Flurk. So you're programming the Flurk, and that's what's really cool. Also, unlike universal remotes, where you used to usually had to find the uh, brand name and the model number for the device and you pick it from a list, it's not like that because we're not programming our remote. We're programming the remote to the Flurk. So it works with any infrared remote, and you just point, and point it at it and press the button. That's all you have to do. So it works with every remote, and that's what's really cool about it. I think the idea is totally ingenious, really. To be honest with you, I wish I had come up with the idea. And uh, it works really well. So we'll go ahead and end off our recording session and let's get back into the review portion and sum things up. All right, everyone, thanks for staying with me till the end. We're now at the last part of our review and that's gonna be basically the conclusion of everything we've talked about. What's my personal opinion on this device? Should you buy it or not? And let's go ahead and do that in a traditional pros and cons evaluation. Pros, we've talked about this device in a good light since the beginning of the review. I like everything about it. I like how it works, what it does, how versatile it is. It's just a really great product. The last thing I'll touch on quickly as far as pros is the price point. Let's face it, there's tons of really, really cool things out there that we all wish we could have, but they're very expensive. Luckily, if this is something you want to have, it's not expensive. The Flurk is very cheap. I was surprised at how little it cost, and that's why I ended up getting one for testing. And I bought mine off of Amazon. I'll be sure that in the description of the video, I have that Amazon link for you. So you can go check out the price and buy one if you want. Cons, I've only, ha I've only got one con, really, only just one. But it's super ironic what that con is because it's not a fault of the Flurk. It's what the Flurk is designed on. It's, its greatest strength is its greatest weakness, and that's why it's ironic. The Flurk's strengths are how versatile it is. It's using your pre-existing remotes, and that for it lets you not have to buy new remotes to do this. Let you, you know, consolidate. Well, unfortunately, your old remotes are based on a technology called infrared. And if you know what infrared technology is, um, then great. If you don't, I'll review it real quick. If you didn't know, when you're pointing your remote at your devices, like your TV and your cable box and your DVD player, at the end of your remote is literally light being flashed very quickly. Just imagine taking a flashlight, turning it off and on very, very, very quickly. You're flashing light at those devices, but you can't see it with your naked eye. Infrared is invisible to human beings, but it's not invisible to your devices. Like your, uh, take your smartphone camera, look at your remote, and then point the remote at your camera and press a button, and you'll see the light flashing. That's what infrared is. You're literally doing like Morse code with light, and when your TV or your DVD player sees those flashing lights, it interprets those flashes as meanings. So if it flashes a certain pattern and that's to turn on the TV pattern, then the TV turns on. That's why if somebody stands up in front of the TV while you're trying to change the channel, 
You have to wait for them to move before the remote works again. That limitation is called line of sight limitations. And that is one of the limitations you're going to have to live with with the Flerk because it's using infrared technology. That means if you're using this for your Amazon Fire TV, if you're using this for your home theater PC, whatever device you're using this for, the Flerk is going to have to be somewhere within line of sight. And on everybody's setup that might not always be an option because you might have this computer in a different room you might have it behind the TV you might not want it out in plain sight and if that's the case you're either gonna have to run some kind of USB extension so the flirk can be within line of sight or you're gonna have to have that device out in line of sight if you're gonna spend money on the flirk you could spend that money towards another type of device that uses you know say radio waves which is wireless and it's not line of sight and you could literally have your computer in a closet somewhere else in the house and still use it without line of sight restrictions so the con is using infrared technology but the pro is because it's using infrared technology it's so versatile if you were to buy one of those wireless remotes you're going to have to have a device that can use the drivers for it you're going to have to have um probably a computer to do that so you can't use it with say amazon fire tv because it doesn't have a drivers in addition to that you're going to add another remote to your collection so instead of having one or two remotes now you have three or four uh, so you see it's a direct trade-off between how versatile and how cool the flirk is and what it can do to consolidate your remote collection but also the infrared limitations so i don't know what setup you use at home or what your goals are but depending on on that setup you have the flirk's either going to work for you or it's not if you're in the boat where it's not, then stay tuned for one of my next reviews coming up. I'm actually going to be reviewing a 2.4 gigahertz remote that uses radio frequency instead of infrared. And that means I will not have those line of sight limitations. That's going to be the F10 remote review, and that'll be coming up here in the next few weeks, hopefully. But other than that, the Flerk is great. It programs easily. It's very versatile. It works like it's supposed to. It's not expensive. I think it's a really cool product. I definitely recommend it. So that's going to end the review. I hope you guys enjoyed it and you learned a lot from it. I'd appreciate any comments, concerns, likes, favorites, subscriptions, anything like that to say thanks for doing the videos and keep them coming. I just want to remind you once again, this is Vicious, and I'll see you next time.